Welcome everyone to episode 6 of Let's Play Planet Coaster here on Theme Park Worldwide. It's another new episode and I'm going to be starting on a brand new ride. You can just see it placed in there at the back left of the park. Obviously you've got the Mediterranean entrance area, the coaster to the left and of course the tram tour at the back right of the park. And uh, yeah, this new ride is going to fit in really nice with the skyline. And there's a little look at the ride system itself. Uh, this was actually brought into the game as part of the studio's update when that came out a couple of months ago now and uh, yeah I've actually put two of these in next to each other of course this is for the realism of the game and also uh, for those throughputs I think this will be a really busy popular ride and I wanted to put two actual ride systems in with this one uh, very similar to that of Tower of Terror which operates at lots of the different Disney parks out there around the world each one's got a slightly different version uh, some of them a little bit different than others but uh, yeah looking at this one just here that is exactly what this ride system is. It moves forward and then we're inside the drop shaft now and then it'll drop down to different scenes and then lift you up. Uh, I've got a really good idea of what I want to do with the theme for this and I'll explain that in just a few minutes time. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to complete this probably in three episodes. This first episode now, which is more about putting in the shell of the building and starting to do those scenes on the ride. And then I'll work out the other scenes what are gonna be around the rest of the ride, uh, the facade and uh, yeah, sort of the exterior and queue line. That will come in the third episode uh, with this one. That's what I'm expecting with this anyway. Obviously, with it being sped up footage, I don't quite know really where it's going to go. But uh, let's start off then. Let's start by building the actual uh, building itself and the shell. So as you can see there, with this stopping in various different locations, I want to have different scenes on the ride. There's going to be five different scenes inside the drop shaft themselves. So what I want to do with this is actually make sure I put a building at the front uh, to house this. And you'll see in just a few minutes time where I actually test the ride, keep starting and stopping it so I know exactly where to build the different flooring levels. And uh, that will be the exit just there, the exit corridor to that tower there on the left hand side. Um, so you'll see me here just build, gradually building that up and in a moment uh, you'll start to see me putting in the different levels and uh, later in this episode the theme in on those different levels as well so it's a massive project this one I haven't made it easy for myself really with building uh, two in one so to speak normally if you're doing a ride like this you just want to do one but obviously I want it to be more realistic obviously Tower of Terror at uh, the Disney parks has got either two or three of the drop shafts uh, depending on which version around the world and I just think it looks more realistic for a tower ride you've got to think these elevator style rides don't seat many people and in a real theme park situation you wouldn't just build one of these because the throughput would be awful uh, so I'm making sure that I think about this from the start and uh, yeah to be honest it's just gradually boxing in this building really and thinking about what I want to do like I say it's going to look like a massive shell for now from the outside uh, because obviously it's going to have a big facade and all buildings around the side uh, but I'm not going to do that yet because I want to put them interior scenes in first obviously building with a roof and walls all the way around does make it really hard and now I want to make this project as easy as I can do for myself because it is going to be quite difficult uh, and very detailed with all the different things I want to do uh, but you can still try and make it as easy as I can do uh, by doing it one stage at a time and not putting all the walls and the roof on until we've got some interior parts here you can see me now uh, working out where them different levels are going to be. It's probably quite hard at this point to see where I'm going with this, but you'll see in the next few minutes exactly what I'm going to do. And you'll see me there moving out the different squares uh, to block out where each different level is. I'm going to build a scene inside the ride on each one of these levels. And obviously the floor is going to extend to both of the drop rides there. And I'll put pretty much identical scenes, I'm thinking, in there uh, for each one. However, that might change a bit later on. I might maybe do a slightly different ride experience for each side. Maybe one of them be more intense than the other. Um, but already you can see this is about, what, half an hour's worth of work there. You already start to see the shell of the building and uh, how this is going to end up. But uh, there we go. Let's talk more about the actual theme of this ride and what it's going to be about. So, I've had numerous different ideas and a lot of suggestions have been coming in from you guys. And there's been a few that I've really liked. So I've sort of mixed a few together to come up with my storyline for this. And I want you guys to build on it more. I'm just going to say a basic storyline and start to put the theming in. And then I'll let you guys, between this and the next episode, and maybe the one after that, really 
put the story together and, and make make it all seem realistic, you know. Um, but here's a little look at on ride just there, how this is going to be. Uh, you can see just there then where these different scenes are all going to be in the different sections. Five different scenes going in just there. Now the basic story that I've got for this so far is that we've got this old mansion house and inside this mansion lives a very wealthy family. Uh, now inside there, there's lots of different rooms and you're going to actually go to these rooms on this elevator ride. But you're actually going in there as the local sort of public who are quite envious, quite jealous of this family and what they've got. Very rich, they've got healthcare, they've got everything what they could want. But the locals found out how they got that and it was actually from finding uh, this magical book uh, what was worth a lot of money and it's got actually a lot of mystical powers that actually come from it. Uh, and lots of locals want a part of that as you would do uh, if you found out something like that. Um, so basically all the locals, they're going in there and they're going to try and find this book and that's what brings you into this elevator. Uh, they head into the house and the story will be explained and then basically things start to go wrong from there. They actually see the book which will be in one of the scenes sort of floating around quite a magical book maybe on a table at the back I'm not really too sure yet uh, and then it's going to sort of take these different scenes because obviously the family that live in there find out that you've come in to their house into their property it all takes a bit of a dark turn and then you end up dropping down several levels into a cellar where I'm thinking and we're gonna have maybe some demons in there, some skeletons, all that kind of stuff. And it's really gonna sort of make you feel quite like, oh God, what's happened here? It's all took a bit of a dark twist. You then try and escape via the roof, hence the reason for the lift taking you all the way up onto the roof level. However, you don't escape from there and it drops you all the way back down uh, into another cellar, which is how you make your escape. So there you go, that's the basic story behind this ride. Uh, and you might be thinking, God, that's a lot to take in there, Sean. Uh, but if you've got more that you can add to that, I'd love for you guys to, so keep commenting below. Uh, I'm quite set in the, the storyline it is going to stay at that but I want you guys to sort of add to it if you can do and if you want to make a couple of little changes that's fine as long as it fits with the theming that I'll have already installed uh, with the ride I love making it as interactive as possible and uh, yeah you'll start to see some of that scenery going in quite soon uh, here you can now start to see me boxing in the top section that'll be the tallest part of this drop ride and you can really start to get an idea now on where the different scenes are going to be uh, but in the meantime I'll leave you for the next few minutes with a bit of theme park audio I know you guys uh, enjoy that with our planet coaster episodes and I'll speak to you in a few minutes where we'll continue building this ride and now I'll talk to you a bit about it
So as you can start to see then, I've been adding different walls and roof panels, uh, whether that be wallpaper or tiles, all that kind of stuff, including the floor as well, into these different scenes. And uh, yeah, it's coming on quite well so far, I think. It's definitely looking how I wanted it to. It's a big project, but in terms of a time scale, it's took maybe two hours to get to this stage uh, so far. But uh, whilst I continue doing that, let's have a little chat about some things that have been going on in the theme park industry. Obviously, there's been quite a few new rides open. Uh, Oscar's Wacky Taxi, that opened at Sesame Place over in Pennsylvania. That looks really good fun. I'd like to go there and check that out. Comment below if you are going to go and see that soon. Here in the UK, which is obviously where Theme Park Worldwide is based, uh, we've been to Blackpool Pleasure Beach for the opening of Icon. I won't talk too much about that because I've mentioned it in a lot of other videos, but I'd certainly uh, recommend going to check out our dedicated Icon videos on the channel. Uh, there was so much going on uh, with, with Icon, whether that be the media day, uh, the opening day, on-ride footage, off-ride footage. We've got it all on Theme Park Worldwide. We really have been the place to, uh, to see updates on Icon. I think it's gone down really well. So I'd just like to say an extended thank you to each and every one of you who's followed our Icon construction updates and also from Secret Weapon 8, uh, what became Wicker Man at Alton Towers, who followed our updates over the past couple of years. It's always refreshing to have new rides open so close to home. Obviously, it's been really nice following those really closely and I look forward to seeing what other developments we're going to have uh, in the UK over the next few years. Uh, there was some sad news, though, last week from Europa Park in Germany. Obviously, there was a fire there uh, that did take out a whole themed area, including the Pirate and, and Batavia uh, boat ride that was Pirates of the Caribbean inspired, really, uh, from the Disney parks. But it was really nice. It had its own unique charm to it. It was more like the Pirates of Holland and, and the Netherlands taking you around on this journey. It was some really nice lighting. I'll always remember the effects in there, the animatronics, the star cloth, and uh, yeah, it was really sad. The fire actually started in a warehouse at the back of the Pirate and, and Batavia show building. It then spread to the ride itself, and then it took out Veneta, which is like a little walkthrough, uh, like an observation viewing area, and uh, a restaurant, retail units, and uh, yeah, the whole of the Scandinavian street that was a beautiful area of Europa Park. Uh, but I've just been looking at the updates as I've been recording this, and uh, Europa Park are planning to reopen uh, the coffee cups ride, it's like a teacups in Holland, and also the Ford Fjord rafting, which is a rapids ride, in the coming weeks. So they're really not messing about. I know there's diggers on site at the moment actually moving rubble and things, and we're set to hear an announcement on Paraton and Batavia soon with what they plan to do with that one. So uh, I look forward to following the developments, but as always, our thoughts are with everyone involved. There was no injuries to park guests, luckily. But over 250 firefighters helped to put the blaze out, which is an incredible number. And now of all of those, there was just seven uh, that were sort of injured with this, but nothing too major. It was just smoke insulation. Uh, so they've inhaled smoke whilst they've been putting the fire out. But uh, hopefully they're all right now. Our thoughts are with everyone involved. And of course, Europa Park and the Mac family as well. Obviously, the Mac family were over in Blackpool uh, just a few days before for the launch of Icon, and uh, they were back at Europa Park when this incident did take place. But uh, at least they were over there so they could make their decisions and uh, of what they wanted to do and things. Obviously, uh, the Mac family are heavily involved with it being such a, a family corporation. It, it's not sort of where, where it's like a big corporate thing like Merlin, for example, where nobody really owns it. It's more just directors and and that sort of thing with Europa Park the Mac family own that park and it's their thing to look after and build on and uh, yeah it's good that they were actually there so they could deal with the incident themselves and uh, obviously support all the colleagues and rest of the staff at Europa Park uh, but like I say once again our thoughts are with everyone involved and uh, yeah I'm sure Europa Park will come out stronger from it and I look forward to seeing how they uh, move forward with this one but uh, yeah obviously Europa Park lots of other new stuff going on at the moment Eurosat Can Can Coaster that's going to be opening this summer and uh, yeah well, we've got Horror Nights Christmas again at the park lots going on and I'll definitely be out there at some point this year but uh, at the moment as you're watching this video I'm actually out in the United States of America I'm over at Cedar Point in Sandusky Ohio it's a bucket list park for me I've wanted to go for so many years and uh, yeah it's great to actually be out there experiencing it at the moment and I hope you guys enjoy the updates and the uh, vlogs when they come online here on the channel 
You can see just here then I'm adding more details into these different scenes with it having more of an old mansion style feel. We're using a lot of the haunted scenery that was released as an add-on uh, to the game quite a while back now. And uh, yeah, it looks quite nice in there. We've got like the big uh, wreaths on the wall. We've got a burning fireplace just there. And of course, we've got all the different seats in there as well. That's like some sort of grand hall. And there's the book flying around there, the left-hand side of the scene. And uh, that's the first glimpse you're gonna get of it. I can imagine there being some audio of the locals who are in the lift being quite excited that they've seen this book and uh, how to actually get it out and how to remove it from the house. But obviously, when they start talking about that, that's when they drop down into the different scenes. Uh, using different special effects here to add that sort of uh, ghostly mist inside there, so to speak. And uh, yeah, I think it's starting to look really nice so far. Obviously with the dark ride, lighting's really important, all that kind of stuff. And that's something that I'm definitely going to focus on uh, throughout this ride. Here you can see an upside down scene uh, going on there. And uh, you've got like a clock which is hanging from the ceiling. Everything in this room, just the other way around. Obviously you're gonna drop into this and you're gonna think what the hell has just happened. We've just seen this book floating around that we really want. And uh, now we've ended up in this scene where everything's spun upside down. What's going on? The family must know we're here. And maybe they're using their, this book or family spirits uh, to sort of send this message to us as in get out basically. And uh, so yeah, I really want you guys to build on this story and uh, comment down below on the video with uh, what you'd like to see me do. But uh, here we go, let's have another few minutes down some theme park audio and then I'll share with you an on-ride POV of how the ride looks so far uh, as of the end of this episode.
So there we are, it's really starting to come together now and you can see what I mean now in terms of building up the different scenes. You've got the five scenes there, this is going to be a corridor that leads down to those. you then got to think about the lift shaft itself and of course the station and offload area. So there's still quite a lot to do, but you can see just here I'm doing a bit of work there, boxing in the corridor, and in the next episode I'll put theming in down there. But yeah, there's a lot to do, but you can see where I'm going now in terms of doing it scene by scene before I box in the whole building and uh, complete the ride. But uh, I might put some more details in those five scenes, but I'm quite content with how it looks so far. I'm gonna concentrate on the other scenes and then look at where to go next with it really, instead of concentrating all my time and energy uh, into those five rooms. I think it's important to get the balance right between the station, uh, the rest of the ride, and uh, yeah, making it look good. But it's a massive project this. Obviously, coasters are quite sort of easy, so to speak, to do, whereas a dark ride, you've got to put a lot more thought into it. You've got to think about sight lines, where things are being blocked off, what you can see, what you can't see. Am I doing theming? What's going to make no difference to the ride? All that kind of stuff has to come into play when you're doing such a big scale dark ride. But uh, like I say, keep your suggestions coming in. Really look forward to seeing what you guys build on with the storyline. And I uh, hope to share another episode soon. Like I say, as this has gone on, I'm over in Cedar Point at the moment, but there'll be lots of updates from that. And I hope to share another episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster, probably in the next couple of weeks at some point. The weather's been really nice outside, so I've been making the most of it and visiting actual theme parks and uh, instead of sitting in playing Planet Coaster. But I'm loving this series so far. Uh, I really am, and it's great to share it with you guys. Obviously, there's no set upload date for these. I do them as and when I can do, but I don't want to rush the series, as I think it looks really good so far so thank you very much for watching i'm going to end the video now with a little on ride pov of how the ride looks so far so thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next episode see you soon